thank God that I got it, too. Toby Keith, a popular country singer known for his pro-American anthems, has passed away at the age of 62. According to his website, Keith died peacefully on Monday surrounded by his family, and he was praised for fighting his fight with grace and courage. Keith gained prominence in the 1990s with hit songs. Throughout his career, he pushed back against record executives who wanted to soften his rough edges. Over his career, he publicly clashed with other celebrities and journalists and often pushed back against record executives who wanted to smooth his rough edges. He was known for his overt patriotism on post-9-11 songs like Courtesy of the Red, White and Blue, and boisterous barroom tunes like I Love This Bar and Red Solo Cup. He had a powerful booming voice, a tongue-in-cheek sense of humor and range that carried love songs as well as drinking songs. Keith worked as a roughneck in the oil fields of Oklahoma as a young man, then played semi-pro football before launching his career as a singer. I write about life, and I sing about life, and I don't overanalyze things, Keith told the Associated Press, following the success of his song I'm Just Talking About Tonight. He spent a couple seasons as a defensive end for the Oklahoma City Drillers, a farm team for the now-defunct United States Football League. But he found consistent money playing music with his band throughout the Red Dirt Roadhouse circuit in Oklahoma and Texas. Eventually, his path took him to Nashville, where he attracted the interest of Mercury Records head Harold Shedd, who was best known as a producer for the hit group Alabama. Mr. Shedd brought him to Mercury, where he released his platinum debut record Toby Keith in 1993. His breakout hit, Should Have Been a Cowboy, was played three million times on radio stations, making it the most played country song of the 1990s. But the label's focus on global star Shania Twain overshadowed the rest of the roster and Keith felt that the executives were trying to push him in a pop direction. They were trying to get me to compromise, and I was living a miserable existence, Keith told AP. Everybody was trying to mold me into something I was not. After a series of albums that produced hits like Who's That Man and cover of Sting's I'm So Happy I Can't Stop Crying, Keith moved to DreamWorks Records in 1999. Keith learned good lessons in the booming oil fields, which toughened him up, but also showed him the value of money. Songs like I Wanna Talk About Me, a spoken word song written by Bobby Braddock about a man frustrated by a talkative partner, got him attention for its similarity to the cadence of rap, which Keith dismissed. They're going to call it a rap song, although there ain't nobody doing rap. Billboard magazine in 2001. Keith often wore his politics on his sleeve, especially after the terrorist attacks on U.S. soil in 2001, and early on he said was a conservative Democrat, but later claimed he was an independent. He's played at events for Presidents George W. Bush, Barack Obama, and Donald Trump, the latter giving him a National Medal of the Arts in 2021. Keith was a two-time winner for the Academy of Country Music's Entertainer of the Year, and he received the inaugural Country Icon Award at the first People's Choice Country Awards last September. He was also awarded the National Medal of Arts by President Donald Trump in 2021. Toby Keith was born Toby Keith Koval in Clinton, Oklahoma, and he mostly grew up in the suburbs outside Oklahoma City. Keith played high school football and then worked on Oklahoma oil fields. He and a few friends started a group called the Easy Money Band, and they played local bars in their spare time. After being laid off his oil job, Keith played semi-pro football, and the Easy Money Band began to tour through the Southwest. In the early 90s, Keith went to Nashville and recorded a demo, and after a long struggle to be heard, he signed with Mercury. Toby Keith's 1993 debut single, Should Have Been a Cowboy, became a number one hit on the Billboard Country chart, and it became one of the most played country hits of the 90s. Keith cut an intimidating figure, tall and barrel-chested, with an outsized swagger. He sounded like he'd seen some things, but his voice conveyed a soulful vulnerability that wasn't always obvious in his lyrics. In the 90s, Keith jumped from one Nashville label to another. He released four platinum albums, and his singles, Who's That Man and Me Too, went number one country. In 1997, Keith covered Sting's song, I'm So Happy I Can't Stop Crying, which was just a year old at the time. Sting appeared on the record, and the two of them performed together at the CMA Awards. In 1999, Toby Keith signed to DreamWorks, and his album How Do You Like Me Now? reshaped his image slightly, moving him away from glossy and romantic mainstream country and into a sort of Hellraiser provocateur mode. The pose was knowingly exaggerated, and Keith's videos became cartoonishly crass. The move was hugely successful. The album went platinum, and two of its singles went to number one. Keith did even better with 2001's Pull My Chain, which went double platinum and sent three singles to number one. 
Toby Keith achieved new levels of mainstream visibility with his 2002 single, Courtesy of the Red, White and Blue, The Angry American, a jingoistic and bloodthirsty response to the 9-11 attacks. The song became a number one hit, and it reached number 25 on the Hot 100 and turned Keith into a culture war figure. Keith referred to himself as a conservative Democrat, and he endorsed George W. Bush's re-election campaign. Later, he said positive things about both Barack Obama and Sarah Palin, and he eventually re-registered as an independent. In public, though, Keith played the role of right-wing tough guy, feuding with the Dixie Chicks and playing Donald Trump's inauguration. That right-wing move led to the peak of Toby Keith's career. Two of his albums, 2002's Unleashed and 2003 Shock and Y'all, went quadruple platinum. Beer for My Horses, his 2003 duet with Willie Nelson, endorsed vigilante justice and even lynching, and it became yet another country chart topper. Even during this period, though, Keith hits were often just self-deprecating party songs like As Good As I Once Was. I reviewed a 2007 Toby Keith show in New Jersey, and I'm not quite sure what I expected. Keith set didn't do anything to make my feelings about him less complicated, but he did know how to put on a show. He also talked a lot about how being an American didn't mean being a Democrat or a Republican, the kind of talk that you really don't hear from people in his cultural position anymore. Toby Keith never again hit the zeitgeist the way that he did in his post-9-11 peak, but he kept racking up country hits for years. Made in America, his last number one, came out in 2011. Keith founded his own show dog Nashville imprint, and he opened a few branches of his I Love This Bar and Grill chain. Keith made multiple appearances on The Colbert Report and Huckabee, and he participated in a few TNA wrestling events, once suplexing Jeff Jarrett. He starred in the made-for-cable movies Broken Bridges and Beer For My Horses, the latter of which was based on his song. Keith contributed the song Don't Let the Old Man In to the soundtrack of the 2018 Clint Eastwood film The Mule. Last year, at the People's Choice Country Awards, Keith performed that song, giving his first public appearance since his cancer diagnosis. He released Peso In My Pocket, his final album, in 2021, and he played his last live shows in December 2023 in Las Vegas. Keith had an honorary degree from Villanova University, which he attended from 1979 to 1980. He was an avid University of Oklahoma sports fan, and Keith was often seen at Oklahoma Sooners games and practices. He was also a fan of professional wrestling, being seen in the front row of numerous WWE shows that took place in Oklahoma as well as performing courtesy of the red, white, and blue, live at the first ever TNA wrestling show on June 19, 2002. He was also a fan of the Pittsburgh Steelers football team. He was a free will Baptist. Keith married Trisha Lucas on March 24, 1984. He was the father of three children. Keith's father, H. K. Koval, was killed after a charter bus collided with his car on Interstate 35 on March 24, 2001. The Koval family was awarded $2.8 million for his wrongful death on December 25, 2007. Elias and Pedro Rodriguez, operators of Rodriguez Transportes of Tulsa, and the Republic Western Insurance Company were found liable, as they failed to equip the bus with properly working air brakes. In 2004, Keith called himself a conservative Democrat who was sometimes embarrassed for his party. He endorsed the re-election of President George W. Bush in the 2004 presidential election and performed at a Dallas, Texas, rally on the night before the election. Keith also endorsed Democrat Dan Boren in his successful run in Oklahoma's 2nd Congressional District and was good friends with former Democratic New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson. In a January 2007 interview with Newsday, Keith was asked whether he supported the Iraq War. He responded with, never did, and said he favors setting a time limit on the campaign. He also said, I don't apologize for being patriotic. If there is something socially incorrect about being patriotic and supporting your troops, then they can kiss my ass on that, because I'm not going to budge on that at all. And that has nothing to do with politics. Politics is what's killing America. In April 2008, Keith said that Barack Obama looks like a great speaker and a great leader. And I think you can learn on your feet in there, so I don't hold people responsible for not having a whole bunch of political background in the House and Senate. His remarks continued, I think John McCain is a great option too. In August 2008, he called Obama the best Democratic candidate we've had since Bill Clinton. Cause of death. The singer died on February 5th following a battle with stomach cancer, which he revealed the diagnosis for in 2022. 
Heath said that his battle with cancer had been pretty debilitating in a December 2022 press release. The love for Toby Kate transcends boundaries and resonates through time. His influence, his art, and his unforgettable words will forever be etched into our collective memory.